Hello, David Harper of the Bionic Turtle with a brief tutorial on how to calculate volatility under the moving average approach. We could also call the moving average approach the unweighted scheme. And this is a good place to start with estimating volatility. We're going to find that it has shortcomings such that it's not used very much in finance but we do still see it in practice for example companies as they estimate the volatility for purposes of pricing their employee stock options still use moving average volatility so it is a good place to start to show you how it works I pulled exchange rate data between the euro and the US dollar and I did that for about 31 trading days and except that I've hid the rows so that they don't get in the way. If I quickly expand those, you'll see I've got lots of rows of data. But I'm going to collapse those in between so you only see the start of the series and the end of the series. So, for example, here on February 6th, yesterday, the exchange rate was such that one euro purchased $1.46 in U.S. dollars. So to do the moving average volatility, I'm going to start with, the, I need the periodic returns first, which is given by this formula here, which is the periodic return is the natural log of the ratio of the prices. So for example, for February 6th, the formula is very simple. It's the equals LN, stands, that's the Excel function for natural log of the price or the exchange rate on February 6th divided by the exchange rate on February 5th. And that gets me a number that's pretty close to zero. And at the bottom of that series, I'm going to take the average. And I get a number that's pretty close to zero. And I'm dealing with short periods here, one day periods. Whenever I'm doing that in regard to almost any financial asset, I do expect that the periodic return is going to be pretty close to zero. Okay, but now that I've done the periodic returns, I can start by calculating the proper moving average volatility which is given by this formula here and I'm gonna I'm gonna start by zeroing out these function cal these calculations here so I can recreate them and this one here and so I wanna implement this formula here to calculate the moving average standard deviation and so I take I start with a single observation and I take the periodic return and I subtract the average return in the series and because all of the all of my observations are going to use the same average I'm going to lock that reference in with an absolute reference by hitting the function for key and then I'm going to square that difference so this is a squared deviation right here and hopefully you can see all I've done is execute here what's inside the sigma. It's a the periodic return minus the average in the series. I square the difference. It's a square deviation. And having done that for a single day, I can do that now for all of the days. And so that's the, now I can do the summation and then the division here, which is the same as the average. So then I just take the average of all of these squared deviations and that gets me this formula it's the summation divided by the number of observations so it's the average but note this formula is sigma squared so this is a variance so I need to take the square root of that variance to get the standard deviation which is the volatility so I have done it I have calculated the daily volatility for this exchange rate series which is uh, almost 0.6 percent now really there I treated it all as if it were a population which isn't so realistic generally we're drawing a sample from a larger unknown population so let me go to the second flavor here which is in orange and it's much the same except that divided by M I divide by M minus 1 that reflects the idea that this is a sample and the net effect of this is going to give me a slightly larger variance and slightly larger volatility to account really for my uncertainty that I'm drawing a sample from the larger population so here these cells are the same as before it, these, it is the periodic return minus the average square that difference do that for all the observations 
but this time instead of taking an average I'm going to sum all of them and divide by this time the count the number of observations whoops got to open this reference up here I'm going to divide by the number of observations minus one to reflect that minus one in my formula and so my formula here is sum them all divide by the number of squared deviations minus one so you can see I'm just matching this and that gets me my sample variance so that's the difference this is a sample variance this is a population variance having calculated my sample variance I can now take the square root to get the sample standard deviation and so you can see it's a little bit larger it's going to be slightly larger in all cases to reflect the additional uncertainty that I'm drawing from a sample when would you use this well one way to think about this is if here is the population mean do we know it or do we not know it if we do not know it if we're just estimating it then probably it's a sample and probably it's appropriate to use the sample formula okay I'll move that out of the way and show you the last and maybe the best approach of all because it's easiest and it, it's easy because we take this formula here well I really meant whoops I really meant this formula here for the sample variance and we make two simplifying assumptions one we allow ourselves to drop out the minus one and just do a one over m second we assume that if the period is short enough that this average return is zero and uh, by convention if it's we're talking about daily returns we generally as, as a convention say it's okay to assume that the average daily return is zero so in other words it's close enough to zero that we're gonna assume this is zero and this drops out well when we make both of those simplifying assumptions we get over here to something much easier which is it's the sum of the squared returns divided by the number of observations and so we can say this in one simple phrase it's the average of the squared returns so that may be the way we really like to do it just because it's convenient and so just to show you how that works in Excel if I come back up here to the first observation here I'll just blank that out I say equals the periodic return I square it so all I've done is square the periodic return copy that down for my whole series and then I just need to take the average of the squared returns and I get the variance and so I need to take the square root of that to get the uh, standard deviation or the volatility and you can see it's very close so it was probably okay that we made those simplifying assumptions so that's the that implements this idea here that the variance is the average of the squared returns and so that was the third way to calculate or estimate volatility and maybe the easiest and that concludes the three ways just to recap what we did in all cases we need the periodic return which is the natural log of one price divided by the previous price or exchange rates in this case we looked at the population standard deviation we looked at the sample standard deviation and then we looked at the standard deviation that by way of simplifying assumptions allows us to simply take the average of the squared returns that's the variance then take the square root of that for the volatility so this is David Harper the Bionic Turtle I hope this was helpful thank you for your time